birthday on it. Kind of MLK words. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can't move. So Dennis had some words. Did you, Dennis? You want me to get some words? You got right. some words. I got some Dennis? words. Let's gather around. Gather around. <laughs> I mean, he got like. You know. <laughs> so y'all comfortable? So everybody can get in. Touch it out. Okay, Ninja. All right. <laughs> so obviously this is a candlelight visual. I think one of the first things that you usually do is let's have a moment of silence. How long do you usually do that for? A moment. Let's go. So, so Guinness broke the world record for longest silence. Time. <laughs> <laughs> Which is? I don't know. It's a good question. Uh, visuals are uh, maybe an hour. Minute. <laughs> All right. So we're gonna have a moment of silence for Dr. Reverend Martin Luther King on what's today's date? Uh, the fifteenth of. January. January. This was. This is not his official birthday, is it? It is. Yes, this, this is the is birthday the day. Birthday, not the sixteenth is the holiday. Mm -hmm. All right. So on his official birthday, I'd like to thank Dr. King. So let's have a moment of silence. Thank you, thank you, that's it. All right, so I did have some words. Um, I just basically, I'll just explain what Dr. King means to me. <laughs> his, his legacy means to me. Um, I admire Dr. King because of his selflessness, you know what I'm saying, to sacrifice and for his bravery. <laughs> I myself, when I grew up, I was more of a, like I was telling Adam today, I was more of a Malcolm X fan. Um, I didn't get the whole non-violent <laughs> aspect of his movement. But as you grow up over a period of time and you start to learn and understand life, you realize that the only way to get anything accomplished would be through a non-violent um, protest. So I respect him. I say today that I respect him for his bravery to be a forward thinker and understand that before most people did and to do it because we all know from being in this Occupy movement that um, dealing with uh, aggression and not responding in aggression is a hard thing to do. But most importantly and the most prominent thing about Dr. King was his um, I Have a Dream speech. And like I was telling everybody today I like to be real honest, and I want to say that I appreciate that understanding of a dream, but words mean a lot to me, and that was Dr. King's dream. He set forth some footsteps to make that dream happen from all the actions that he did, but now this is our opportunity to make his dream a reality. And that's what I believe this Occupy movement is actually uh, picking up off of, from the Civil Rights Movement, because it's all inclusive, uh, the way Dr. King was. Um, he started out champion for the rights of African Americans and then progressed into champion for the rights of human beings. And that's what we all about. And on that, I'm gonna say peace. Anybody else? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he, um, Martin Luther King talked about the idea of a beloved community. And I didn't quite get that for a while. I thought he was just talking about, you know, love your neighbors or here in this country that, you know, whites and blacks will love each other or something like that. But it's so much broader. It's what he's, what he's talking about is a sense of um, humanity seeing our entire community as beloved by all of us and feeling a sense of collective responsibility for each other. So yeah, I think that's what the Occupy movement is, is doing. It's, it's helping to move his dream of a beloved community forward.
Can we talk about the way that we would like to see the world? You know? Ooh, I think oh, yeah. that is a Can we all have a yeah. statement and about maybe how that dream was shaped by Dr. Martin Luther King and what how that's applicable to this movement? Yeah. You wanna go first? Um Okay, okay you know hold my pal? Alright. Okay. I like did you get in the middle of the cycle? Okay, yeah. Yeah. I'd like to see everyone. So, I'm so proud of us. Um, this is beautiful. And I don't care if there's like 15 people, five people, three people, two people. We're standing. We're standing in solidarity. We're honoring the people that came before us, that believed in peace and love, changing the past, leading the way, calling us to a higher purpose on this earth. And we're here in the snow, in the sleet, in the rain, making a political statement. That tent is a big deal in a public place that gives us the right to know each other, gives us the right to change our culture and to change our minds. We are the change we'd like to see in the world. This is it, this is happening, and it's unstoppable. And the only way we will be stopped is if we stop ourselves. We can do this. Yes, we can. And we mean it this time, President Obama. <laughs> yes, we can. And yes, we will. Cheers. Cheers. All right, let me jump back in here. All right, so basically, this is kind of a ploy. I hope that these, this video, because I'm going to talk to the video right now, I hope this gets out. This is a message to the world. Um, to all the occupiers out there, it's important as we think about our Dr. King's dream of, um, of us all working together and universal community and the whole world. We need each one of us to legitimize each one of us. And, um, and I, what's your name? Joe. Joe. And Joe was just explaining that to me today, and I can't remember the words, how you put it, but it was perfect. And, and what I'm saying is, is that uh, if you are in the Occupy movement, make sure that you reach out to every community, to your African American community, to your Hispanic community, to your Asian community, your Native American community, because collectively we will legitimize ourselves in our search for equal rights, um, fairness and whether it be politics or any social type of um, justice that we're looking for but it requires all of us to reach outside of ourselves and maybe touch and communicate with people that we may not have done <coughs> normally and that's it okay. <coughs> I ain't gonna sing. <laughs> I'm not gonna sing. Uh, one of those awkward silences. We're supposed to be talking about what we want to see change, right? Yeah. What do you want to change? I want us to go back to being a country uh, for the people, by the people. That's all. So, yeah. Good. Yeah. There have been a lot of great people out there like Dr. Martin Luther King. And he really stood out, and we really should pay attention to all those other people that are out there with great minds and great thinking. I want to see us all get along as a world. I want us to see us all be neighborly, be friends and neighbors and community. I want to see a fall of this weird greed that goes on in the world. 
I really have never been one for nationalism because I think we're all human beings. We all should have the privilege to be able to know each other and to gain more consciousness through other people. Uh, in Christianity, Christ didn't believe in all the hatred that his people are bringing down and saying these people deserve to die. He didn't do that. And none of the other religions I can point out today go out and harm people. None of them. <laughs> we all should be li lifting ourselves up to be Christ-like or Buddha-like or Confucius-like or whoever you worship. Because they all it's all based on a principle of love. And our society should not see another person fall while others are allowed to rise and continually rise. We need to fix this so instead of pharmaceuticals that cover symptoms, we're coming up with stuff and allowing the stuff to be put out that heals us and brings true healing. And the same way with criminal problems, there needs to be healing with them. They shouldn't just be put in a cage like an animal and just sit there and suffer and not know any better way. A lot of them are there because they're undereducated. And it's a lack of love and companionship throughout their lives. And there's a lot of people that are on the outside that are the same way. They're lonely. There shouldn't be lonely people on this planet. We should be able to get along together and do things for the greater good of all. And it, it, part of that is learning how to quit destroying this place we live in and build it up and get, know that we don't need to travel so far all the time. We can get along with all these vehicles. We can have a sense of community right where we are. It, and if we want to go somewhere, we should be able to go there easily and not have a, oh, you can't come into my country because you don't have the right papers. If we are all learn to be better people, we don't need those barriers. There, it, there shouldn't be a need for We should quit uh, supporting people that are mudslingers and people that want to naysay. I don't personally don't believe in a 99% and a 1%. I believe we all need to change. I believe in the 100% to change. And that's the gist of my thinking, period. I, I dream of a day where we make our decisions as society based upon the highest value of humankind and what's best for all of us rather than a profit for a few where our, our education system reaches for the talent within each person and nurtures it so that they can do things, grow up and do what they love and contribute and that quit building bombs, they're just obsolete because we all love each other and that's our highest good. What about you, Joy? I'll get my turn. Somebody else go. <laughs> Joy speechless? Get that moment on camera. Quick. <laughs> I did, I did. I'll get my turn.
first time? Oh, yeah. Time. Go. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Do you want me to hold your candle, Dennis? Give me hold, oh yeah. Or your glove. Oh, uh, no, the thing. The thing, yeah. got the thing. I'll hold my candle, too. Yeah. No, I'll right. get it turn right. What I want to see is the Dennis Hopper 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 kind of isolated so you know I I didn't really have a concept of poor versus rich cuz I mean I grew up in an upper middle class family and I went to school in farmland uh, surrounded by kids richer than me and poorer than me depending on you know how well their farm did I didn't I was friends with all of them and I've never really understood the divisions we see in our society. I didn't, I thought, I thought racism was a thing of the past until probably high school. I knew what homosexuality was years before I'd ever even heard of the concept of homophobia. I, I want that world. I want the world that I saw as a kid to be a reality. I want, I, I want us to all see the world as we do as kids, which is, you know, we, we learn, we learn our greed, we learn our hatred, we learn these things from the generations before us. They don't come from us naturally. So I want to see, I want to see the whole world look like it looks to children. And that's, that's what I want to see. world where I don't have to sleep in a park to have my voice heard. <laughs> Love is understanding. And understanding is to know. Knowledge. So when I think about Dr. King, that's what I think about. I think about us just getting together and knowing who each other are, learning a little bit about each other. Because even with the uh, natural divisions of our, the color of our skin that we have, we have divisions within that. You might be white, but you might be a rocker, and that business uh, guy might not like you, or he might, pre he might have a prejudiced sense ag against you. We need to <coughs> cease and desist with all prejudices because if you believe like I believe, I believe that there are some powers that may be that seek to use those divisions, natural and unnatural, to control us. So the moment that we learn about each other and learn to connect and love, then we can accomplish anything and it will erase all the problems that we are here fighting for now in this Occupy movement. What I hope for is a, a unified, universal community where we all can learn and love each other and grow with each other and get to know each other. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. I wish I knew the word. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have an idea for yeah. how to close this circle. If um, there aren't people who still want to come and share something. Yeah. We don't want to close it until everybody who wants to say anything yeah, has said it. So has anybody got want to say something that I, I have one more thing to say, and it's not about my dream, it's about the reality that as we stand here tonight, there have been people standing all across the world from seven to eight in their own time zones celebrating this man who totally changed our lives and how we interact 
it, across race, how we interact even with one another, and, and how we interact to make change. And he showed us that peacefulness can really change it all and, and made the ultimate sacrifice um, so that we could be here today. Think about that. The people that make those ultimate, the people that comes out peaceful tend to be the people that make those ultimate sacrifices. If we, as we think about Dr. King, let's not forget about Mahatma Gandhi. <coughs> let's not forget about Malcolm X, who also who may have started out with aggression, but learned that that wasn't the way. Um, the Harriet Tubman. Uh, uh, let's think about John F. Kennedy, who tried to make that leap, um, but um, just like everybody else who tried to make a peaceful action, he was took out, took it out. So it's a lot of people and we are those people too. And that's for sure. So who knows what's gonna happen now? Who's gonna have a school named after them in the next couple of hundreds of years or 50 years uh, with our actions in this Occupy movement. And I wanna say that I appreciate everybody here and I love all of y'all. Um, and uh, I think that we're gonna make some big things happen here in this next coming few months here. Peace. So here's my idea for a way to close. Um, you wanted to speak? Yeah. So uh, tomorrow's tomorrow is the King's birthday. Fantastic. Today's his birthday? Yeah. Today's birthday. Okay, well, all the events are tomorrow. <laughs> um, and uh, I mean, the thing that kind of, you know, I always get really frustrated and a little pissed off leading up to this, this uh, great man's birthday because I feel like from the day after he was assassinated, his radical and revolutionary ideas, his traditions have been completely robbed from him from the day one. You know, when we're in school, we hear, we have to go to Dr. Martin Luther King, you know, uh, assembly. assembly. Yeah, we get a day off from school and whatever. And we hear about this nice black guy who fought for civil rights and got assassinated and how sad it was. What we don't hear about and what we don't see is the image of Dr. Martin Luther King right there that Deborah's holding. You want to get a look at that on camera? Yeah. Leader social movements that had to fight severe repression <laughs> from just about everybody in order to get what they wanted. You know, it's we hear about I had a dream speech. It's a beautiful speech, but we don't read Letter from Birmingham Jail. Yeah. We don't read Beyond Vietnam, and we don't hear about the Poor People's Campaign. All these really think this, these great conclusions that he drew as, as things went on. <laughs> you know, so I've always been more partial to the image of Martin Luther King sitting in jail than I have of him giving a speech, because I think it gives the essence of what he's talking about. But, I mean, I saw an interview with him recently, I think it needs to be highlighted. One of his best strengths is that he had the ability to draw conclusions very quickly as the struggle went on. So he realized as they, as they won gains in the South that the issue of race and civil rights was intimately intertwined with that of social class. And he understood that it was easier to integrate a lunch counter than to guarantee a basic income for all people, for universal health care, etc. Before he was assassinated, there was a plan to march on Washington, the Poor People's Campaign, right, which was going to succeed the Million Man March. It was going to demand all kinds of social, social programs and things that we're demanding for now. <clears throat> and ironically, just like Malcolm X, the moment that Martin Luther King started to draw systemic conclusions about capitalism, about how the world works, about global poverty, about imperialism, he was assassinated because he became even more of a threat, right? Because he was integrating people all across the board, working class people, etc. So, <clears throat> tomorrow, today, whatever, next couple hours, go into our fancy media tent, go read Mer Letter from Birmingham Jail Beyond Vietnam, or go read about the P Poor People's Campaign. Because I think in a lot of senses, in many ways, we're picking up where he let off. <clears throat> Anyone else? Anybody else? So, a way to close. Um, the light's a great symbol of the light that we all carry with inside us um, for the gifts that we bring to this movement. And recognizing how we are a community and Dr. King saw us as a beloved community taking care of each other. I'm going to put this one down and ask <laughs> that someone pass me their light. And then when someone needs a light, pass it to him. And now pass it along.
until we've gone around the circle, we'll put them all out together. Yeah, so you're good. So That's it, we just, just one. Oh, that's it? Just one, just, just move up past one. Hmm? Take that other one. We, we got around. two here. <laughs> Share your life. What's your two. two. You got two, I think. No, no? I no? gave someone else. Oh, okay. Blow them all that together. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Happy birthday, Dr. King. Happy birthday. Deborah, thank you for these candles.